good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you may be in this wonderful world. The photographer's friend is an early morning because you get great light. It's also a motorcyclist friend because the roads are pretty much empty. I mean, look at this. This is the main drag and this is a weekday. I had a 4 a.m. start this morning and we are going to go somewhere that I've seen many photographs of but have rarely been to photograph. I'm using the main road purely because I need to just get on and get there. Hopefully we'll find some pretty little back roads a bit later on. Anyway, see you on location. So here we are, Corfe Castle. Now the popular place to photograph from is on top of that hill behind me, but the sun is coming up over there. I thought it would come up further round the other way. This is why it's always worth going to see what would happen. Looking at where the sun was coming up using suncalc.net, I think I like the shape of the way the castle, look at that, it's, nice up there isn't it the way the castle sits in this sort of gap between a ridge in the hills we are in the little village of Corf now Corf has been here for an awfully long time there are burial mounds in this area which suggest there has been human habitation here since 6000 BC how cool is that the castle, which we're going to have a go at photographing, was built by William the First. William the Conqueror, I believe that is. I will put something on screen if I'm wrong. I'm good at getting stuff like that wrong. But it's a very, very, very pretty little place. And also the roads around this whole area are phenomenal. They're absolutely amazing. Just for exploring and looking around, there's some wonderful stuff in this area. Okay, looking at it from here, that light's not very good. I expected it to be better than that. I th thought we might have a few highlights on this side, but we haven't. So I think I have screwed up by coming around here. Probably should have gone up that hill. Let's see. That's why it's worth visiting these places. You have to go back often several times to understand them properly. Yeah, this angle, the castle looks a lot better. You see the highlights on the side of it? You see, there's probably some great shots to be had from in town, you know, looking in between houses and things like that. I don't know where those shots are. Not having been here before. What's it look like from down here? Eh. It needs something behind it, not just sky. If it was a really exciting, interesting sky, that would probably work very, very well. But it's a clear sky. I was hoping we might have a few sheepy little white clouds floating around, but we haven't. It's quite a good angle from down here, isn't it? But again, we're looking straight up in the air going to walk up the hill where everyone else goes. <laughs> you see, this is the thing, I always want to be different. Is that a good idea? I don't really know. I think I can park in here and find a way up the hill. We'll go and see what it looks like. There we go, so everything is stowed on the bike. I kind of regret not getting up earlier because the light's quite nice. I'm not sure about the angle. And I'm not quite sure which hill we need to go up. So let's take a little walk around the corner, see if we can find a way. Look at that pretty sunbathed hill, cows on it and everything. I'm assuming this is the right way. No idea. We're gonna find out in a minute, aren't we? 
here we go. It was a bit of a hike to get up here and the light has changed quite drastically because I've just wasted 20 minutes trying to get these Rode Wireless Go microphones to work. Anyway, what have we got in front of us? Corf Castle, we've got quite a good angle from here, but let's take a closer look. Now that's kind of nice. The light isn't ideal. It's coming in from kind of up and over there. It's a bit higher than I wanted it, but the biggest problem is, I think, that horizon. Look, if we sneak in that focal length, and hopefully my little camera will focus up. There we go. See, that's quite a nice shot, but look, this kind of horizon line, this empty sky, the horizons colliding with the castle. I don't think this is the best angle, but we can, of course, look at it and think about composition and things like that. So as we take that focal length out a bit, we can think, where do we want to position our castle? I quite like having a little bit of cool village in the shot down below, having the castle a bit high like that. That's quite nice. So, you know, there are possibilities here, but I think that skyline cutting through the castle is not great. So even if we go wider, look at that beautiful light on the land though. That is rather nice. Shame the sky is so empty, but never mind. Let's climb up the hill a bit further. See what it looks like from up there. It really is quite a scrabble. Sorry for the wobbliness, you're on top of the tripod, pushing through a load of brambles. But hey, this is the only way I can find up. And it is very steep. I think we're coming up to the top now. Oh, look, that's getting more interesting. That's quite a climb. So we've learned something else, and that is, we need to bring a headlight, a torch, something like that. Right, that's a more interesting angle, I think. Composition is all about climbing hills as well as everything else, because composition is where you position the camera. We've just positioned the camera quite a few feet higher up. I don't know, where are we? We're a couple of hundred feet further up, I'm guessing, hiking up through the brambles. That, I think, is much nicer. Now, because of the light, the castle is just a little bit invisible on top of its hill. We've got beautiful light going on shore on the hill, but you can just about pick it out against that brighter field. Now, if we zoom in a bit, that has possibilities, but I quite like the thought of having the village in there. So let's turn the camera to the right a bit zoom back out a little and just see if we can include the hill and the village and what's going on in the distance. I think that's a nice composition. Again, shame about that sky. It's not ideal. Let me take a reference photo. I did take one further down. I just forgot to film it. So here's the one I took further down the hill. Let's try one from here. So let's try putting the castle pretty much in the middle like that. The light isn't helping it stand out, is it? Now let's move it over to the left of the frame. We can see the castle because it's against that field, but again, it's not necessarily ideal. Let's go really much wider and see what happens. Try putting it to the right. Then we're looking off across to the ocean. We've got a bit of sun in the shot. I don't know whether, let's have a look. I quite like that one with the sun in the shot, actually. Even though the castle is just a bit dark, the one against the field is okay. It's not a bad angle, but we haven't necessarily got the right light conditions. Never mind. Let's go further up the hill, see what it looks like from up there. So now we are pretty much as high up the hill as we can go. We're really looking down on the castle. So on a misty morning, that's going to work very, very well because all that surrounding will be missed right now. It isn't ideal. But look, you know, that's why we're here. We've come for a day out. From this angle and in this light, the castle has very nearly disappeared altogether against that dark background. You'd hardly know it was there, would you? So let's increase the exposure so we can see it a bit more. But look, you see, this is what's gonna happen now. Gonna have problems because of that bright sky. But it's not a bad angle. These are all things to do with what time of day you get here? What's the light doing? But something which I think could possibly work is I quite like including the sun. Now, let's darken the exposure for you again because I quite like that sort of thing. Now, shooting a raw file and doing a bit of post-production 
taking down the highlights just a touch, lifting up the shadows just a touch. I think that could help. I'm going to take it anyway. Let's see what we have. Now exposure, this is going to be a bit more tricky because we've got the sun in shot, so there will be an area of burnt out highlight. But I'm probably going to go with, what do we got? Histogram is telling me I've got detail at either end of the scale. A histogram is simply a map of the tones within an image. As long as it isn't off going off either end, that means a RAW file contains the data and we can just lift it up a bit. If you shoot JPEG and let the camera do it itself, that's fine. It's completely cool. But you haven't got the amount of control. If you shot in the days of film, you might have done stuff in a darkroom, dodging and burning and all that. That was the way we did post-production back then. Let's take this and just see. I don't think it's going to be an awesome picture because... The light just isn't quite right for the castle. <laughs> I'm just having a quick look in the back at what the camera has created for me, because what you see in the back is the JPEG the camera makes. Just looking in the back here, what the camera has made, we can't really see the castle at all. But nonetheless, it's a great angle. It also tells us that if we came here earlier, when the sun was just kissing over the top of that horizon. That might be interesting. A few rays of light might then backlight the castle against the hill behind it. You'd have, you know, a nice little sort of a rim light. Just found this. This, I think, is probably the optimum position. I really like this spot. The castle is just sitting on the horizon. Rather than having the horizon cut through the castle, it's just kind of sitting on that line. You could even go down a little bit, and even in this light, it actually looks pretty bloody good, doesn't it? So I've got the wide angle lens on, and it's pretty good, isn't it? If we sort of zoom in a bit, even from, you know, zooming in a bit with the two hills and the sun, it actually looks quite good from this angle. Partly because we have moved more towards the sun we're getting a bit nicer light on the side of the hill and on the edge of the castle. Shame the sky is so empty. But for me, this is probably the best spot. Right, quick shot, even now, because the light's not bad. I'm gonna darken it down just a touch. Uh, where are we going? So I'm gonna give it a thousandth at F7.1. Histogram says we should have everything in there. That should be pretty cool. I'm going to do it like that and have the castle really small. And I'm also going to do one more just to see if the air is clear enough for us to get a starburst. So I'm going down to F22. I'm going to have to compensate with the shutter speed. F25, sorry, 125th of a second. F22 is giving us a starburst. So focus on the castle. F22 and a wide angle lens. It doesn't really matter. I think... I'm quite pleased with that. I've actually got a photograph I kind of like out of this morning's recce and found the perfect place for me to stand. So, good news all around. I do want a cup of coffee. And I'm going to have a little look and see if there's some shots to be found from down in the village. But before we do go grab a coffee, I want to go back to West Street Car Park. I want to have another look and see what it looks like from the other side of town. Simply because the sun has moved, the light has changed, everything is different, light is king. So we'll nip round there and do a test shot before we come back. It's got a bit busier now, hasn't it? People are going off to work, going to do their stuff, wherever they're doing. I'm a very, very lucky person indeed, really, aren't I? Hmm, that's a bit more interesting. There's some light coming round onto this side. It's not great because blue skies are boring, right? If you're into the landscape thing, what you need is some detail in the sky, something car park up here. This isn't a bad angle at all really. And also the sky is a bit more interesting because there are a few little puffy white clouds going on. It's better than I thought it would be. But of course we're still not at the right time of day. We haven't got perfect conditions. But look, that sky looks so much better with a little bit of detail in it. 
just blue skies, they're boring. So what would we do with this? Now, I don't like the lens being quite this wide because I don't like that, those wires, I don't like that pole, I don't like this little thing in the corner. Remember, when you're composing a picture, look all the way around the viewfinder. Don't just look at the subject. That castle isn't going anywhere. Focal length and composition, they're best friends. So let's just sneak that focal length in just a bit and lose those things we don't like. There we go. I think there's a little bit of shade has just gone on it. The edge of a cloud must be just touching the sun. Yes, it is, look. It's just kissing the edge of the sun and it's just caused a bit of softness over here. Look at the castle, look how different it looks at the moment. We've got a light pool going on in front of it, down here, look, but it's not on the castle. I wonder if that light pool will do us a big favour and move towards the castle. I think it is, it's coming towards me. I don't want to be high lit. <laughs> I want the castle to be high lit. Let's just hold the shot and just see. Here we go. It's just started to wake up again. It's a reference shot, or if you're here and you can't come back at the perfect time, at least you've got a reasonable picture. So where were we? We were just here somewhere, exposure. F10 I'm gonna use, just simply because it's a middling aperture, it's a nice choice, 500th per second, 250 ISO, seems to work well. It actually looks quite good. It actually looks quite good, better than I thought we'd get. For this time of day, at this time of year, in this type of light, that isn't a bad shot of it. This is another great angle from which to shoot from because we're including a little bit of the village, a little bit of the town, we've got the church, we've got the castle up on the hilltop. Now the light's gone flat. There is a lot of cloud in the sky which has made it more interesting, but there's a little bit of light coming up on the hill. Look at that, light pool again. Am I not the luckiest person in the world? Let's just see if we're going to get a bit more of it because the sun is just feathering through the clouds at the moment. We've got a little tiny bit up there. Let's check my exposure. I want a little bit brighter. Quickly, quickly. Here we go. I don't like the white van, but we've got a bit of light on there. I'm taking it, hoping we'll get a gap in the traffic. Ah, now we've got a truck. We don't want the truck. All the way. <laughs> this is why you need to come early. Click. I think we've got it. So again, light pools are everything. We've got a little pool of light on the castle, which is making the castle stand out more from its environment, from its surroundings, settings. So that was a 500 the second at f9 using a 250 ISO and a 10 millimeter lens because we wanted to capture more of what's going on. And while I've been talking to you, I've just seen that the light is even better. I'm going to take a bit more care, zoom the lens in a bit more. Look at that. That is even nicer. That really is much nicer. And because we've got a pool of light on the castle itself, it is really standing out from the village. Days like this, when you've got clouds and blue holes, they are the best for this sort of photography. So, yeah, it's not a bad picture in its own right. I'm kind of pleased with that. Well, that's been pretty productive. And now it is definitely time to see if we can grab a bit of breakfast. This place looks really good and apparently it has a great reputation. Oh, you've got lots of lovely things going on here, haven't you? We have. <coughs> Do I order here or sit down or...? If you sit down, we'll come to you. Will you? Can I sit outside? Yeah. Sit outside. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be lovely. I'm just looking to see what, what there is. Check out the first. Yeah, check out the goods. Once you've had a lovely breakfast, the next step is to then go and find other viewpoints outside of town because, you know, we're in pretty close to the castle at the moment. Let's go hit the road, go round into the hills, take some pretty back roads and see what we can find from there because there's bound to be some long lens opportunities too. See you on the road. This is a great angle from up here. 
Kingston Country Courtyard. Oh, they won't like me parking here, but I think I might because photographing over this gate, straight across this field of sheep, it's really rather a lovely view. I'm going to give this one a lash. I think it's unlikely you can even see the castle off there in the distance, particularly not with the wide angle of the GoPro, but I promise you it is there. If I start zooming in, hopefully the focus will keep up. It often doesn't. Here we go. Come on, focus on something, please. Come on, there. Can you see the castle down there? Let's just keep going in a little bit because I don't want that van, or whatever it is, down in the bottom of the valley. Now, if we do get a light pull, land on it, and I think we might. Can you see there's some light on this side and it might be traveling in that direction? Now, if we do, that could be quite nice. I think it will light the castle up. Look. It's happening again. It is just sneaking past through our viewfinder. Oh, come on camera, focus. Come on, focus on something. Right, we've got focus. The light is just starting to climb up the hill onto the castle. These days when you have clouds and blue holes in the sky, they're just perfect for photography. Look, the castle has now suddenly woken up. Compare that to how it was just a moment ago. Quick, what is our exposure? I think it's going to be fine as it is. It's a little bit hazy and the castle is just sort of bathed in light and we've got a little bit of shade in the foreground. Let's just see if we can focus on the castle and get a few sheep. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. I like that long lens look. I know people say you should use a wide angle lens for landscapes. That's nonsense. You use the focal length that works for the shot that you want to take because you are the person who is composing the picture. And focal length and composition are best friends. They dance and hold hands together. If you'd like to find out more about that, camera settings, light, composition, then please come and have a look at my online masterclass in photography because there is a link popping out in the top right hand corner of your screen right now. Come and try a free sample, scroll down the page and you will find a link to get that. These are not just snippets and glimpses at lessons, these are entire lessons from the course. They are very valuable in themselves. Please come and have a look, try it out. Because until you are completely confident with this thing, you are still at the start of your journey. Then you can move on to advanced photography. And advanced photography has got nothing to do with tech or giggles. It has got everything to do with how you think because photography happens in here. It then comes down through your arms and into this thing. All this does is capture the picture. It doesn't take the picture. So please like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you want to watch part two of this, when I come back and reshoot this in optimum conditions, then please make sure you hit the notification bell and then you will be reminded. If we've already done it, there is a link in the top right of your screen right now where you can go and watch that video. But this time of year is not ideal. I think I'm going to need to come back in the autumn, maybe even next spring. This is what landscape photographers end up having to do. Until next time, be well. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you soon.